Good morning, everyone. Um, I think it's morning, sort of, just about. And welcome to this meeting of the Senior Officer Appointments Staffing Subcommittee. Um, this meeting will be webcast and a record will be retained on the Council website for up to two years. By participating in this meeting, you are consenting for your name, the content of what you say, and your image to be broadcast and stored to the Council website. For those in the public audience, your image will not be directly broadcast unless you're registered to speak, but you may be indirectly captured on the stream. If any member, officer or member of the public has a concern with this, please contact the committee services officer. Is there anyone at home viewing the webcast? If you look above the video, you'll see a resources tab. If you select that, there will be a link to the agenda and you can see this on the right hand side this will enable you to open the agenda um, and help you to follow the discussion and the debate. Uh, if I can remind members, turn your microphone on when you're speaking to ensure that you're captured on the webcast. And please remember to turn it off when you're not speaking or we get feedback. Do we have any apologies? Sorry? Yeah, Councillor Rennie. Councillor Rennie and Councillor Cameron is um, substituting. So thank you very much, uh, Councillor Cameron. Um, do we have any declarations of interest? Anyone? No? Okay. I'm not aware of any public or members' questions, which moves us on to item five, recruitment posts. And uh, Tony, you're going to take us through that. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, if I just may start with a, an apology, uh, we do everything we can to try and avoid single item agendas. Uh, I know it's not best use of your time. Uh, this particular report has been um, awaiting to, to be tabled for some time, uh, and we felt we, we couldn't really leave it too much longer uh, before bringing it, but we, we will try and avoid uh, these meetings as, as far as possible. Uh, so the report in front of you sets out the challenges associated with meeting uh, the resourcing requirements arising from the multiple programmes and projects that are in progress or planned to deliver um, the regeneration of the borough and the local plan. Uh, and you'll see I've got the Director of Regen in place, uh, Alan Evans, here today as well, uh, who may be able to pick any questions that, that you may have about, about that. Um, the report seeks to address the challenges and maximise the opportunity for the councils to secure the skills and experience that we need. Uh, and specifically seeks agreement for the head service to apply uh, market supplements to salaries uh, linked to the delivery of regeneration agenda where there is a business case for doing so. Um, I'll come back to the, re the, um, the recommendation shortly, but just to, to pick out you know, some of the headlines from the report, which hopefully you've had an opportunity to read, um, you'll be aware that the regeneration um, program uh, that is underway is um, described in the report as a kind of once in a generation opportunity for change within the borough um, with a, a wide range of um, programs underway including um, the work around the town centre, future high streets fund for Birkenhead, new ferry, uh, 25 million pound towns fund and um, plus uh, millions of um, pounds of further bids under consideration. And we're now one of the largest regeneration programmes in the country. Um, the government has shown confidence in the council by awarding a number of different grants and um, different capital funding for us to deliver this. Uh, and in total, there are around about 18 programmes and 140 projects, which are growing all the time. Uh, arising from that, um, as you might expect, there's some significant pressures um, to make sure we've got the skills and resources that we need to deliver it. Um, and that is quite significant and the report sets that out from paragraph 3.6 onwards over the past 12 months the level of recruitment uh, activity within regeneration has been extremely high uh, and we've added a, a very wide range of disciplines uh, which is escalating uh, and, and, and we are recruiting skills specialism and experience that traditionally local authorities wouldn't have um, and some that we don't need long term, but we need to deliver on specific projects and programs. Uh, and we, we're meeting those requirements in a number of different ways. And um, we do have some interims and consultants. 
we're recruiting um, fixed term staff where we can or permanent staff where we need them um, and it's a, a constant challenge between HR uh, and Alan's team to to do what we can to get the people in at the pace we need them um, and making sure we, we keep those plates spinning really um, we do share details of the interns and consultants with group leaders because we know there's um, kind of interest in, in those roles and the number that we've got in at any one time. Um, bringing us to the subject of this report then, um, we, we set out that the Council's current um, uh, employment arrangements for recruitment of staff is, is essentially split into, into two areas. Um, up to EPO 25, and the salary scales are, are included in your uh, report, uh, Appendix B. Um, that is a matter of head of paid service, um, and through the chief executive HR team directors, we recruit to those roles. And as you're aware, above that level, at chief officer um, grades, that is, they are members' appointments. Um, what we're proposing that, the, that there are some, the, from an officer point of view, there's greater flexibility required to try and secure what we need um, from a salary point of view without necessarily appointing chief officers. Um, so the, um, at the moment, as I say, anything above EPO 25 would um, by default become a kind of chief officer level salary. We're not wishing to appoint chief officers or more assistant directors or, or, or directors, but we're looking to have some flexibility about the salary that we can pay. Uh, in order to attract people and potentially reduce the number of interims and consultants by doing so, uh, as we know that there'd be some interest in the people who are currently working for us on that basis in moving across to the council um, into either fixed term or permanent roles. So what the report is seeking is that the head of paid service can authorise the offer of a market supplement over and above the salary of EPO 25, uh, up to a further 15K per annum. Um, in exceptional cases. Um, the checks and balances that would exist around that, would, uh, uh, any proposals to do that would be signed off by um, Director of Finance uh, and a Director of Regen uh, sorry, and Director of Resources and Section 151 Officer, as well as myself, to make sure that we were comfortable with the case in each case and there was a, a market uh, reason for doing so. Uh, and that was the best route for us and the most economical uh, route to secure the skills we've got. Um, I won't say too much more about the report itself because hopefully, as I say, you've had a chance to read it. But there are three recommendations um, that we are asking, um, that we're recommending to you today uh, to ask for approval. Uh, A, to note the level of recruitment activity ongoing to meet the requirements of the Council's regeneration agenda and the challenges associated with this. B, to agree that the head of paid service has the authority to apply market rate supplements of 15K in exceptional cases for roles uh, required to support the delivery of the regeneration plans and where there's a business case for doing so. And then C, to agree that the Economy Regeneration and Development Committee is tasked with maintaining oversight of any appointments made in regeneration related roles and where any market supplements are applied to a salary level up to an equivalent to assistant director level. Thank you, Chair. I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks, Tony. Any questions, comments? Bill. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I think we went through a similar situation when we were turning children's services around, when we had many um, staff working for agencies and there was a process of encouraging staff to sign up and become Wirral staff and committed to Wirral. So I can see the logic. Um, two things crossed my mind. One, we, we attract people or retain people to do all this regeneration work. Uh, which will help turn the place round. I'm just wondering if there's any view on a time limit. Um, it then, after a period, it would become part of the salary, part of the supplement, and things might change over time. People might decide to move on, or they might be very happy here. I'm just wondering, as part of it, uh, whether there's a review process. And secondly, what format uh, the committee, the Economic Regeneration Development Committee, would get because we'd be, or our members would be receiving reports, possibly about specific individuals, in which case um, data and um, potential naming people need mean exempt reports. So it's a question of what the reform at that review and reporting back takes so that members are satisfied that it's working well, and that we're retaining people, and they're doing what we asked them for. Thank you, Chair. Okay, through you, Chair. 
Um, yeah, thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. Um, yes, you're right. We, we undertook some similar work um, post Ofsted in um, 2016 for children's services um, at a lower level than this, admittedly, in terms of attracting um, staff into roles that were currently operating as agency workers. Um, so we, we have done that before. Um, we, I would be happy uh, and happy to take the committee's view on, on building in a review process for this if we wanted to review it in you know, 12 months or two years. Um, again, I think that would be sensible to have some mechanism to, to review any decisions that are made today uh, and check if they are still required at that point or, or, or achieving the de desired effect. Um, so um, I think that, that would be, as I say, a sensible option. Um, and I think in terms of the Economic uh, and Regeneration Committee, um, we would need to be careful about any um, individual information, but I certainly could, um, could see how we could work at that. We can give details of the number of market supplements that may have been applied and the reasons for that without getting into any um, GDPR or any individual uh, issues. Um, and of course, the, the benefit of doing it through that committee um, would be that they're very closely linked to the pieces of work that are under discussion as well. So, um, hence the, the, the proposal that that committee would be best placed, uh, perhaps, to view uh, this. Um, one thing I neglected to say, and I should have done, uh, so apologies, is, is in a number of cases, the funding for these roles is, is also um, within the, the, you know, the project grants or the, um, some of the, the, uh, the, the, the funding that we've been awarded. So, um, that, that's a factor that needs to be, um, I think, as well, factored into to the decision. Thank you, Chair. Can I just say that because of this funding matter, time limits need to get the government grants and other funds in place. There is a pressure and a need to get on with things like this, so I understand entirely the reasoning behind it. So, um, I'll bring Councillor Cameron in a second, but if I can just, um, just on salaries, um, Alan, are any of these salaries likely to be eligible to be capitalised as part of this work? Uh, yes, Chair, so um, there's an exercise on at the moment. We're looking at capitalising as many salaries in the Regen team. So there are obviously financial regulatory rules around capitalisation of, of um, particularly staff salary, salaries, but they are all contributing towards physical assets. So where we are able to apply um, staff's time to, to the um, capital programme and through the um, the funding we get through the grants, as Tony said, we're doing that. So I, I'd envisage the majority of, you know, probably 60, 65 percent of the overall regeneration service will probably be um, paid for through capital means. Thank you. Happy to, um, to note all the recommendations. I just I'm not sure if it's an industry specific thing or um, obviously, the market rate you're saying is 15k. Is there ever um, any conditions attached to this? Is there any clawback? Because retention is as important as recruitment. So, is it normal practice to maybe say it's 15,000, but you know it's dependent on length of service and it's not part of the remuneration when people do leave? Yeah, thank you, through you, Chair. Yeah, I think what we're seeking to achieve is is the flexibility to be up to 15k. Um, based on skills and experience and perhaps the, the market conditions. So what we're seeing and the report alludes to it is um, there's a lot of competition for these roles and anecdotally some of the people within these roles are telling us that they are being contacted and offered other work across the country. So we're, we're competing in a very competitive pond. Um, so what we're looking to do is just have that flexibility on a case by case basis to offer a salary that we think would be competitive that we is justified uh, and would enable us to secure the skills that we need. So that would simply be the, pay, the you know, the, the, the remuneration for the person at the time that they're with us um, over and above what, you know, our normal pay grades would have. So there wouldn't be any clawback as such, but we wouldn't also be bound to do that for the next person along or anything like that. Um, it's very much each case on its merits based on us securing what we, what we need for the time we need it. Yeah, Alan, do you want to answer that? Thank you. Um, 
to you, Chair. So uh, one of the things that um, doesn't come through strongly in the report, but some of the appointments we make would be fixed term anyway, so we'd probably offer 12-month contracts. So we do know they'd only be there because we can map that against the requirements of the programme as well. So if we know we needed somebody for town centre for a particular project, then we can fix that um, employment period against the backdrop of the project, which probably... Um, probably answer some of Councillor Gilchrist's question as well, where it doesn't have to be uh, in perpetuity, really. We'll, we'll be appointed some fixed-term people um, on that basis, but there will be an awful lot of um, fixed-term contracts. So I think what you said, Councillor Cameron, would probably just wouldn't work with that 12-month fixed-term um, appointments that you mentioned. Thank you. I understand that. And obviously, I, I can see past the financial pinch point we're in. I can see um, this has to be delivered. Um, and the market rate of 15K, is that what the agencies are saying? How does it compare with the London waiting? Um, and also, um, I'm sure there must be other things to supplement retention, because if the market's that hot and the opportunities are so frequent for these uh, key roles, then they could just go to the highest bidder and we end up in, a, in yeah. another auction. Again, through you, Chair. Um, the, the 15K is something we've um, worked up um, based on what we're currently paying for our interims, the day rates, um, and just to give us that additional flexibility. We did feel there was a ceiling to it. So um, currently the EPO 25 rate, which is the head of paid service flexibility, is around about 70K. The 15K would take us to equivalent to kind of assistant director level. And we felt um, that would be as far as we'd want to go in the majority of cases. Um, and so it's, it's it, it, I suppose it's a, uh, it's an estimate of what we think we can get based on the, the people we've had so far and the day rates that we've been paying at interim level and um, to hopefully try and secure some people on a on a different footing really which would give us a bit more security around their skills and expertise and in some cases what they're like, looking for as well so it, it, it was wasn't any particularly more kind of market led than that really any other steve Thank you, Chair. Yeah, uh, my question is probably to Alan, uh, Head of D Director of Regen. Um, I'm aware, or was aware yesterday, that we're going to be leaving uh, a, a considered well-regarded member of staff officer uh, who's been doing a lot of good work on the regeneration team. I was just wondering if, had this been in place, we might have been able to retain that member of staff. Through you, Chair. Um, yeah, thanks, Councillor Hayes. So, yeah, yes, is the direct answer. I think if we'd have been able to have some flexibility on salaries, we would have been able to retain that member of staff. So uh, they were critical in, in really driving forward the town centre um, and the plans that we've got there and securing the additional resources as well. So it is a shame that we're losing them. They're moving on to um, back into the private sector as well. Um, and our salaries don't, really don't sort of compare to those in that private sector consultancy side of things. But with what Tony has said, then I think we would have <clears throat> been able to offer so that a fixed term contract with uh, the market supplement probably would have been enough to have um, changed that individual's mind as well in direct answer to your question. Thank you. So the recommendations do make a lot of sense. Any other comments or questions? No. Okay, I'm happy to move those recommendations. Sure. In that case, do I have a seconder? Tony? Thanks, Chair. Uh, given that we have staff members of the team who have been on a variety of contracts and acting up in excess of 12 months, and the key part that the department has to play in the financial stability of the authority, I'm prepared to fully endorse and second the recommendations outlined in the report. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Do we have anyone against those recommendations? We're all in favour? All in favour. Thank you very much. We have no other items on the agenda, as far as I'm aware. So thank you all very much for your attendance on this very short meeting. Um, hopefully that will make life easier for you, Alan. Um, Right. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Chair.